Hey guys, before we start this video, I want to give a shout out to my other channels, particularly Harry Potter Theory, Fast Facts, and Fantasy Theory, which I've rebranded from the Marvel channel, and it's going to cover literally everything and more you guys see in the banner above. Hope you check those channels out, link is in the description below, so enjoy today's video. We would be honored if you would join us. Welcome everyone. It's become a meme now, and part of internet culture. But one of the most iconic scenes in a film full of iconic scenes in The Matrix is when Neo is offered the blue pill and red pills. One to remain in the illusion, and the other to wake to the horrific reality of being a flesh and blood battery for giant machines. Everyone has a bad day once in a while, right? But the reason I bring this up is because I've been going through the old Legends materials as of lately, and I started reading the Star Wars book Darth Bane, Path of Destruction by Drew Karpishin. It's the first book in the Darth Bane trilogy, which I might start going over with you guys. But in the story, which follows how a cortosis miner named Dessel rose to become Darth Bane, the originator of the Rule of Two, there is a moment where the future Sith Lord faces a very similar choice to Neo. His decision would affect the galaxy for the next thousand years, and possibly beyond. Dessel had left the life of a miner, and joined the ranks of the Sith army as a sergeant. After an incident with his squad, the Gloomwalkers, he has come to the attention of the Sith Lords in the Brotherhood of Darkness, which are waging a war across the galaxy with the Jedi's army of light. One of these Sith, a Twi'lek named Kopex, offers two paths forward for the young Dessel. Here, we learn how Dessel, or Des, decided to become a Sith and took the derogatory term that his abusive father had always called him in disgust, as his Sith name of Bane. And what do you know of the Jedi? I know they believe themselves to be guardians of the Republic, Des replied, making no attempt to hide his contempt. I know they wield great influence in the Senate. I know many believe they have mystical powers. And the Brotherhood of Darkness? Des considered his words more carefully this time. You are the leaders of our army, and the sworn enemy of the Jedi. Many believe that you, like them, have unnatural abilities, but you do not? Des hesitated, struggling to come up with the answer he thought Kopex wanted to hear. In the end, he couldn't figure out what his Inquisitor was looking for, so he simply told the truth. I believe most of the stories are greatly exaggerated. Kopex nodded, a common enough belief. Those who do not understand the ways of the Force regard such tales as myth or legend, but the Force is real, and those who wield it have power you can't even imagine. You have seen many battles, but you have not experienced the real war. While troops vie for control of worlds and moons, the Jedi and Sith Masters seek to destroy each other. We are being driven toward an inevitable and final confrontation. The faction that survives, Sith or Jedi, will determine the fate of the galaxy for the next thousand years. True victory in this war will not come through armies, but through the Brotherhood of Darkness. Our greatest weapon is the Force, and those individuals who have the power to command it. Individuals like you. He paused to let his words sink in before continuing. You are special, Des. You have many remarkable talents. These talents are manifestations of the Force, and they have served you well as a soldier. But you have only scratched the surface of your gift. The Force is real. It exists all around us. You can feel the power of it in this room. Can you sense it? Des hesitates only a moment before nodding. I feel it, hot, like a fire waiting to explode. Now this is a part that I really enjoy because you know, we see the Force used in both the light and the dark, and sometimes in between, like in the sequels, but what we never really get to understand is exactly how it feels. And one thing I really appreciate about this excerpt here is that you get to see, or actually you get to kind of feel, how the Force, or the dark side, feels for someone who has a lot of it. I feel it hot, like a fire waiting to explode. So it's like this pent-up aggression and emotion that's waiting to just ignite or be ignited and blow up at whatever is around him or whatever it's directed to. And I think the Sith had a major problem with uh, the ability to maybe control their anger, because if they did, they'd be more like a sniper shot versus just a shotgun. Both equally powerful, maybe, but one is more directed, whereas the other one has no direction. And I think this really separates the differences between regular Sith and those who are more powerful, like Sidious, for example. The power of the dark side, the heat of passion and emotion. I can feel it in you as well. Burning beneath the surface, burning like your anger, it makes you strong. Kopex closed his eyes and tilted his head back, as if basking in the heat. 
The tips of his head tails twitched ever so slightly. The only sound was the faint crackle of flame from the torches. A bead of sweat rolled down the crown of Dess's bare scalp and along the back of his neck. He didn't wipe it away, though he did shift his feet uncomfortably as it trickled its way between his shoulder blades. The slight movement seemed to snap the Twi'lek out of his trance. He didn't speak again for several seconds, but he studied Dez intently with his piercing gaze. You have touched the Force in the past, but your abilities are an insignificant speck beside the power of a true Sith Master, he finally said. There is great potential in you. If you stay here in Korriban, we can teach you to unleash it. Dez was speechless. You would no longer be a trooper on the front lines, Kopex continued. If you accept my offer, that part of your life is over. You will be trained in the ways of the dark side. You will become one of the Brotherhood of Darkness, and you will not return to the Gloom Walkers. Dez felt his heart pounding, his head swimming. As long as he could remember, he'd known he was special because of his unique talents. And now, he was being told that his abilities were nothing compared with what he could really accomplish. Still, part of him balked at the idea of leaving his unit without even having a chance to say goodbye. He considered Adnar, Lucia, and the others as more than just fellow soldiers. They were his friends. Could he really abandon them like this? even for the chance to join the Sith Masters? He recalled one of the last things Groshik had ever said to him. Don't count on others for help. In the end, each of us is in this alone. The survivors are those who know how to look out for themselves. Everything he'd had, he'd given to his unit. He'd saved their lives too many times to count, and in the end, when the Enforcers had come to take him away, they'd been powerless to save him. They would have tried if he'd let them, but they would have failed. Des realized the truth. His unit, his friends, could do nothing for him now. He could rely only on himself, like always. He'd be a fool to turn this opportunity down. I am honored, Master Kopex, and I gratefully accept your offer. The way of the Sith is not for the weak, the big Twi'lek warned. Those who falter will be left behind. There was something ominous in his tone. I won't be left behind, Des replied. Unfazed, that remains to be seen, Kopex noted. Then he added, this is a new beginning for you, Des, a new life. Many of the students who come here take a new name for themselves. They leave their old life behind. Dez had no desire to hang on to any parts of his old life. An abusive father, the brutality of working the mines on Apatros. He had been seeking a new life for as long as he could remember. The Gloomwalkers had offered an escape, but it had been a temporary one. Now he had a chance to leave his past behind forever. All he had to do was embrace the Brotherhood of Darkness and its teachings. And yet, for reasons he couldn't explain, he felt the cold grip of fear closing in on him. The fear made him hesitate. Do you wish to choose a new name for yourself, Dez? Kopex asked, possibly sensing his reluctance. Do you wish to be reborn? Dez nodded. Kopex smiled once more. And by what name shall we call you now? The fear would not stop him. He would seize the fear, transform it, and make it his own. He would take what had once made him weak and use it to make himself strong. My name is Bane. Bane of the Sith. And here we go. That's how the first Lord of the Order of Two became a Sith, very different from the violent and desperate method that turned the last member of their order, Darth Vader. What Kopex and the rest of the Brotherhood don't realize is that it's not the Jedi that will destroy them, but their newest recruit, Bane, though at this point, Bane doesn't even realize that. Now one thing with the Sith at this time period is that there were so many of them, and they would all kind of just have a civil war between each other. Many of them would kill each other, for no real reason, and this is something that Bane saw, and he thought he could do better. But Bane chose to leave this life behind, just like Neo did. Unlike Neo, though, what he left behind would probably have been the only life that would ever have given Bane happiness. He was abused in the mines. The Sith will make him a monster, but his unit, the Gloomwalkers, will be the only moment in Bane's life that he will ever have a family and camaraderie. There is a timeline out there where he went back to them, instead of going to Corbin, where he took the blue pill. In that world, I see him having a successful military career and retired to a nice planet to raise a family and enjoy life with his friends. Or maybe he would have just died in some battlefield somewhere. There is that possibility too. But he would have died a man surrounded by comrades, not minions. That's a fan fiction for a different time, and it's also something that Anakin hypothesizes for himself, or theorizes for himself, I should say, in a video that I've done in the past, where he thinks, what if Qui-Gon never found him? And in that little fan fiction, if you don't remember the video or if you haven't seen it, Anakin realizes that he would have become an amazing pilot, the best pilot in the galaxy. And he would have made millions and billions of credits and become extremely rich with his aptitude 
for flying and racing. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want me to cover more stuff from Legends and from the Bane trilogy. I think they're really interesting books. And it's refreshing to get some kind of a different character going on. Have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always.